Welcome to Entertainment World Network. Today we're talking to Jeff Richards, an amazing comedian who was on Saturday Night Live, Mad TV, and most recently went completely viral with a video you may know as Gary Busey, Buttered Sausage. Let's talk about your Cable Ace Award. Let's talk about Buttered Sausage. Talk about Buttered Sausage, where it comes from, what it does. Why is it doing what it's doing? Get it out of my face. What about Buttered, buttered, buttered Sausage? That's not your jam. It's not your thing. You don't like it? It's not my jam. I don't buy jam. I buy honey, and I kiss it on the lips. So welcome to the show, Jeff. How you doing? I can't. I can't hear anything. You don't hear anything? No. How did that go away? I'm just kidding. I can hear you. <laughs> Great uh, to Jeff, be here, is, Gary. Jeff is doing a recreation of his show, the Jeff Richards <laughs> show that often has technical difficulties uh, and that we have to deal with. <laughs> oh, so many. <laughs> that's why What's you prefer happening? to be that's why you prefer to be in front of the camera instead of behind, right? I like to be face down on the bed, to be honest with you. <laughs> I uh I like to be knee deep in a, a bowl of grape nuts. Uh, you are pretty often, right? <laughs> I feel pretty good, yeah. So, so what made you want to get into stand-up comedy and comedy in the first place? Gee, that's a good question. I mean, you know, I mean, I think just it was the evolution of just doing voices since I was very young, you know, impersonating uh, family members and, you know, early ones are like Letterman and, you know, uh, Dustin Hoffman. So doing early, just doing it kind of uh, for a while. Then I got into high school and I was like, well, you could be a comedian, you know. And then I just kind of had that in the back of my brain and went off to college and then started doing it in college and didn't stop. What made you realize you had an aptitude to do it? And how did you develop the voices? Well, I took the SATs. That's when I knew my aptitude. Yeah. Uh, and then I knew it was only, I didn't have I had if you added up, my total was worse than just the English or the math. Like, I, I don't want to get into it. Um, so you had no other options. I had no other options, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just kept doing it and started doing stand up, And then I was gonna, I had a kind of a chance to be, uh, like a special ed teacher or go down that route. And, um, uh, another person at the comedy club was like, why don't you just go to LA and just try to do, you know, just commercials or get going on it. So, you know, why not? You know, my, in, now it's, a good time as ever so that was 98 yeah. yeah and how did you get all the way from la to new york for saturday night live airplane an airplane <laughs> one airplane i only need one um and you never came back too so you just i think what happened was i just uh you know i kept doing impressions and you know i moved to la and did the coffee shops and things and then eventually got into the clubs here and there and then just the mad, mad TV was first. So I got a recommendation to, to do a showcase for that and then auditioned for them a bunch of times and got on there for a little bit. And then, then I just got good management. You know, it's, it was, you know, very, a very lucky thing to have, you know, good management that could get you an audition for SNL. Yeah. But you have to be ready for it. It's opportunity meets, you know, experience and all that. How long had you been doing stand up before you got on uh, Saturday Night Live? Oh, I think around two years. You're kidding. No, That's amazing. I, I started doing stand up when I was uh, 98, 90, ended in 97, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. But you were already ex very experienced doing impressions, and, and they brought you in knowing that you could imp do a lot of impressions too. <laughs> Yeah, I could do impressions and, and um, but I didn't have any really any acting training or anything like that. So, but they that's what they tell you. They say, oh, you're a stand up. So we'll start you behind the update desk and, you know, just look, look to the camera and just do the, you know, good way to break you in. It's the weekend update. Yeah. And who else was on the uh, cast at that time? Steve Martin. Uh, no, just kidding. You didn't react on that at all. What do you? Was, he's on. I was, I was processing, and I'm all wait a sec. That does not he, add up. You're like a different Steve Martin. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
maybe well he was on five times so maybe he was on during as a yeah. as a host or something no it's like tracy morgan will ferrell's last year was my first year and amy poehler's first year was my first year and those guys and one of your breakout characters mm-hmm. was drunk girl when was that the first year yeah yeah how did you come up with that character well it's based on my father uh that's almost got you again you you held it a little little too long you thought about it uh, <laughs> well these days you never know your father you could have started know. out as a drunk girl sure so. sure uh you know um i think i was doing a show this is what happened i was doing a show in um san diego at the La Jolla Comedy Store. That is the best comedy club around as far as the audience. It's you know, almost I mean. too good. It's almost too good. It's like the it's Ice like, House. It's like they're, they're yeah, all laughing yeah. gas there. No, but they're yeah. there to have a good time. It's not like oh, they're not Hollywood you, tight. Yeah. But you can get hecklers. Like now we're seeing so many hecklers because you see these crowd work videos. Everyone sees them. So they go to comedy clubs and they want to start heckling. They want to be on these videos. So this is before the videos, but this girl in the audience wouldn't leave me alone. She kept, you know, talking. I'd start to do a joke and she'd talk again. So I just started doing an impression of her to her. And I just like, I'm just like, you know, nothing stops a drunk girl. And then I just, you have to become a drunk girl to beat a drunk, you know, that. And so it was like, that's, that's kind of the, the beginning of that. That was a few months before SNL. Cause I didn't, I didn't uh, audition with that. I didn't, know how to do that yeah it's hard to present if you're not bouncing off somebody for that kind of thing i guess yeah i was ready to do it though if, if they asked for more do you remember what you auditioned with what impressions uh it was like eight or something uh i was like a willy wonka um uh who else um david letterman you're notorious for running all over uh, uh new york i know you're probably in your connecticut home or wherever right but are you still running every day and how, right. how many miles do you run well let's let's be uh completely and totally honest about the I whole endeavor that. um when i dance uh i danced it i danced to kill uh, <laughs> dr phil you know I don't even remember who Gary Gary Shandling. I remember that was. Yeah. How are you? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel weird, but then I don't. I uh, okay. Um. Yeah, but uh, I love Gary Shandling. Rest in peace. Yeah. Do you have any favorites? Other favorites to do? Uh. You know, I just like doing. Um. Well, where'd you go? Are you back? Okay. Um. Who who do you want me to do? You know the ones I do. I could pick. pick oh, one. I can just cut to clips of all of them anyway. So <laughs> if, you, if you just bring I like up doing... one, of... my favorite I like... of yours, I, I think your Robert Downey Jr. is incredible. So that's very nice of you to say. Very sweet of you to say. It's a beautiful sweater. Uh, is that a sweater? No, it's got sleeves. It's fine. Forget it. Just don't <laughs> worry about it. It's, uh, it's incognito. It's um. You know, I wore a blazer, but it was like not the right color, so I just blazed it. <laughs> love your smile. Love your love your way. I love the way about you. You know, this is yeah. this has been really fun catching up. I've been doing you know, this. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. you know, what are we? We're two men. We're living our two lives. Two men just going going about our business. You know, trying our best right. to succeed and and make a good life for our loved ones and our and you know purchase more real estate and, and, you know, become richer and more successful, you know, right. Longer, yeah. deeper, become more, become, pools. become more de- longer, deeper swimming pools, become more detached, a little more out of touch over the years. We become, you know, consistently more out of touch. I strive for that. Yeah. Do you wear flats in the house or do you just barefoot it? How did, how did you develop that? Did you have to watch all of Robert Downey's movies or what? Well, I just, I saw him as like a surfer because he sounds like a South, Southern California surfer. So we can surf right now. We can go surfing or we can just screw around and not go surfing and miss, miss the waves. <laughs> so he just sounded like that in essence. And he just was kind of like this. And he's like, oh, really? I don't know. Do we want to do, you know, like really like kind of witty and and just too cool for school. 
you know, that's kind of how I got there, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's why the Iron Man house is over Malibu. So it makes sense now. Yeah. Um, you're, uh, oh, Dustin Hoffman, another great one. Uh, there was a, there was a, there was a long hallway. And I tried to open the door. There was all these different doors. I was trying to open the doors and wasn't able to open the door. So I just left the door shut. Anyway. <laughs> I used to, I'd be told I looked like Dustin Hoffman when I was younger. Now I probably look like the older Dustin Hoffman. Now you look like Mrs. Hoffman. <laughs> uh, wait, who are, who are my other favorites? Uh, oh, Kevin. Oh, no, no, let's not bring up that guy. <laughs> what you about know, uh, Jimmy Fallon? Yeah, Jimmy Fallon's one. Ah, that's, that's, a coolest, that's the coolest thing in the world. Man. How you doing? Man? It's so good to see you. Man. It's great to see you, man. <laughs> Incredible, you know what I mean? Yes. I just had a hot, I had a hot pocket. You know the hot pocket? That's so good. Pepperoni. <laughs> a, are you kidding me, man? It's great to have you on a talk show as Jimmy Fallon. Now we got to do one of their stupid games that they do on that show. Yeah, I really... exactly. <laughs> uh, Doctor Phil, it, 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 here you don't lock me, D. <laughs> Tell me, take me through what makes you the way you are and don't hold back. <laughs> what an amazing, amazing life. I mean, if you, if you would have told yourself when you're 12 years old, you'd be doing all these stunts and being famous and everything. Would you have believed yourself? No, not one bit. Now, do you watch Dr. Phil a lot? Like, how did you get that down? Um... I don't know. I don't know. I just, yeah, I did watch Dr. Phil bit. I mean, how do you not? He's, you know, was on every channel for a while. Um, now he's got his own network. So, but yeah, it's hard to get away from. I don't know. I just started doing that one. It was a fun one. One of my favorites that's a fictitious. Well, maybe he's not fictitious. Hannibal Lecter. Oh yeah. Hannibal Lecter. Uh, it, uh, it was like a great crank called Deli's is Hannibal Lecter, you know. Mm. Tell me about your tuna fish salad sandwich. <laughs> How much mayonnaise do you use? Don't lie around now. Want to see my impersonation of a rotary phone? <laughs> Tell me about your salads. How do you like your salads? How do you like your salad dressing on the side or in the salad? Uh, I like it in the salad. I do my own just olive oil, a, uh, let me see, fresh squeezed lemon juice and a little Dijon. That's what I like. Or, yeah, or if not a, you, the lemon juice, I'll do a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Oh, that's too much for me. You're mm. doing so well. You were courteous, receptive mm. courtesy. Now this apple cider vinegar business, it simply why won't do. It, yeah, why don't you put it on a low heat and some of them? That's hysterical. Mm. Uh, David Letterman. It, it, you would hope at some point, and I don't know uh, when, but at at some point you would say to yourself, you know, maybe I should open open up the Reese's packet. I don't need to to just chew on the wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of them I haven't even seen, but I have on a list of you is Daniel Plainview from Their Will Be Blood. I've never seen you do him. I want to tell you something. I think you should know. I'm an oil man, not an oily man, but an oily man. You know, <laughs> this is my this is my son Daniel Plainview. I got to get the movie down a little more, but yeah, it's a great movie. So yeah, we've done some stand up together too. It's always amazing to see how the audience reacts to all these different impressions live. Um, have you had any weird experiences with audience members? Like when you're doing these audience, like, do they feel they can interact with the characters? I mean, Oh yeah. You know, like I was saying earlier, I think people, uh, they really want to be part of the show more than ever. Yeah. So you're kind of forced to do crowd work. So, so like, I just like the drunk girl. I told you I was forced to do drunk girl to drunk girl. I, I, I do that with the impressions, you know, sometimes I'll just put, put somebody in their place with, uh, 
with an impression or two, you know? Yeah. So it's interesting because you came up with an amazing tot show, the Jeffrey Richard show. Tell us about that show. Well, it, it, it's funny you're asking me about it when you know everything about it. Uh, it's, <laughs> I have to play dumb, which is what I do all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a, you know it's a show, podcast, and a show. It's on YouTube, Spotify. It basically I interview people as an impression, and we do a full interview, and then they go back. Deep uh, Two Crows, uh, the deep fake guy, uh, puts a deep fake on my face in post, and then it looks like they're talking to you know, the real person. But we talked about making a movie about bananas. You you remember this? You I remember do, I running? do, I do. And, and, and the catch line was something about potassium too, but which, which by the way, is what everybody says about bananas. This is no slight to you, but people always say, oh, lots of potassium in there. Oh, but they're also yeah. yellow. They're beautiful, you know. They're, they're well, they just... are beautiful. They're beautiful yellow. It's, it's very, it's wonderful. It's one of those fruits, very rare fruit. There's not a lot of yellow fruit. Yeah, Sometime. and you you have this incredible Emmy nominated editor who throws it together too. Yeah, Gary something I forget his <laughs> I forget his I name. I love that but guy. He's really great. He's amazing. He's got wherever he is right now is a great view of the city. It's <laughs> just a lucky. Is that a Starbucks? Which Starbucks is this? <laughs> Believe it or uh, not, this is that's my upstairs. That's the the view from upstairs. But I moved sure. it down into the studio. You sure, know, I spent all this money on a studio. I can't afford to hire anybody to work here, so I have to do it all myself now. Well, it's it's a, it's a normal story. It's a it's it's a normal story. I mean, it's, you you you're lucky to have uh, a studio that's on the top of a roof. What are you on the Capitol One building? What is it called? <laughs> all right, let's close. Okay. Yeah, but I did it the smart way. I financed it with a credit card, so good, that's a good, good way, good. good way to do it. It's a good smart. financial advice for people out there. So, you've been doing this uh, show; it's outstanding, very entertaining. It's on YouTube, and you've gotten a lot of views and stuff. But something happened a few months ago when you had Gary Busey on. So, what happened there? Yeah, well. We just did a Gary Busey episode. Uh, my friend Jason Tebow was the uh, he, he hosted it. So, you know, I usually do these where I, you know, whatever celebrity I'm doing, I'm the host of the show. But I just thought, you know, maybe because Busey's so always interrupting and going crazy. So he decided to interview me. And that's it. We just did a, a normal show and picked normal clips and then. Got one clip that got uh, uh, went viral, and and uh, it was real exciting. Let's talk about your Cable Ace Award. Let's talk about buttered sausage. Talk about buttered sausage, where it comes from, what it does. Why is it doing what it's doing? Get it out of my face. What about buttered, buttered, buttered sausage? That's not your jam. It's not your thing. You don't like it? It's not my jam. I don't buy jam. I buy honey, and I kiss it on the lips. Yeah, not just viral. I mean, thousands of people took that clip, impersonated it, spread it around. It probably got 40 or 50 million views minimum. And um, people are still trying to figure out if that was really Gary Busey. And Gary Busey responded too. So what was that like? Well, I love that. It was just the coolest thing because it's like, you know, he, he doesn't even want to like talk about it though. He just was like, I was born in Goose Creek, Texas, 1944. I never had it before. I never had butter sauce. You know, put bl put butter on. You get about butter on toast, or even bagel. I don't know, maybe a bagel or something. I don't know, a bagel. That's what he said. And then and then uh, and then I posted that video. <laughs> I, you know, and then got views up that butter sausage. Well, I'm a native Texan. I was born in Goose Creek, Texas, in 1944, June 29th. I've never had it. <laughs> I mean, who's going to put butter on a sausage? Butter goes on pancakes and waffles and toast and English muffins and bagels, maybe. But buttered sausage, that's a taste ailment. You got a taste ailment. It's just whatever it works out to you, you like it, do it. Keep doing it. Butter sausage. Yay! Go! Well, the great thing about it is 
first of all, he had a great sense of humor about it. It seems like, it seems like yeah. he responded in a great way. And you have this actor who's an iconic actor. He's been in a million movies, a lot of great movies over the years. And this probably put his name out more than anything in, in, in decades because everybody was talking about it. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I know I saw, uh, you know, leading up to it, people would just be talking about, you're going to get, you're going to eat a buttered sausage, Gary. And on the comments and they're just, and it's not a bad thing. He just, you know, got tied to this deep fake thing. And I think the reason it worked was, you know, and people shared it was because they didn't, they didn't think it was fake. They thought it was real. They thought it was because they hadn't seen Gary Busey in a certain amount of time. So, you know, they, they thought it was him. So, I mean, some people did. And a lot of people were trying to figure out like what it means. It reminds me of, um, in Forrest Gump when, like he's running and he says one thing and he walks away and everybody's trying to figure out what he's talking about. Like it's a brilliant maneuver. What, how did you come up with that? Like, did he, was it wasn't, was it written down or was spontaneous? No. Spontaneous. Yeah. I mean, he just tripped something in my head. Uh, <clears throat> my friend, Jason Tebow, he was like, um, Let's he's talk like, you about don't like it. that. He says, you don't like that. It's not your jam. And I don't, I don't buy jam. I buy honey. I kiss it on the lips. But before that, the butter sausage part, yeah, that that just kind of. He yeah, goes, that, let's that, talk about your Cable Ace Award. Let's talk about, let's talk about buttered sausage. Where does it come from? What does it do? Get it out of my face. What? Uh, I don't buy jam. I buy honey and I kiss it on the lips. <laughs> it's so, fun. <laughs> so was that a reflex? Like, because you didn't write that. That was spontaneous, completely. Yeah, it was just like. One of the things that I do is just, you know, sometimes just to give yourself a half a second to think is just to re repeat the first part of the essence of what they just said. You so repeat he the first said, part of the essence of what they just said? Like, so like, <laughs> it depends. Think. Like, it's something you take from it that is the, is the you, you know, is the thing that resonated the most. So him saying, let's talk about that was in my head. So he said, let's talk about that. I go, no, let's talk about this. But th that whole time, I, it gives me a chance to think about what I'm going to say, you know? Right. Yeah. Which you is know. how I deal with hecklers sometimes too, is like kind of repeat what they're asking. You kind of just let like, them talk, you know, they'll, 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 they'll mess it up themselves, you know? Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah it's really interesting. Fascinating. So you tour live. We, we've, I, I know you were in Vegas recently. Yep. yep. Um, you, you have some tour. We're, we're going into 2024. Any fun plans for 2024? Well, I got that. Uh, I did a movie that's going to come out. I'm going to should find out within a month when that's going to come out, but maybe within the next couple months, I think um, it's called pay to die. And it's uh, Robert Carradine and, by Ling and James DeVal and it's uh it's like a comedy horror movie. Oh cool. Yeah. And then you got more touring coming up and then the podcast. And where can people find out about the podcast? I'm going to link to some of these in the in the down below I think. But uh what's your website? My Instagram is the Jeff Richards. That's kind of my main thing. Yeah. And uh, you know all this. I'm having a conversation to you about everything you know. Uh, you <laughs> That's just... the way everything ought to be. I wish I knew everything and I could just uh, pretend to be interested. You're like, so tell me about your uh, podcast. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is so weird. I'll tell you all about <laughs> the it. podcast I'll be editing. <laughs> which you know more about than me. Uh, exactly. You'll be editing this. <laughs> yeah, but I'll make you look really good like always, so. Take the glasses off, though, will you? I, oh, yeah, I can do that in post. You no remove problem. it? Okay. Yeah, those yeah. are the kind of instructions you normally give me. Hey, just solve the impossible, will you? And do it by tomorrow. Tomorrow would be the latest. <laughs> I need it within 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, we, you know, we've been having fun. we got some good guests coming. i got John D. Domenico as Trump. He is hilarious. And I was on a couple gonna... lineups with him. He's really funny. He does one He's of really probably the best good. Trump out there. And one yeah. of them. Yeah, really good. Some good Trumps. I, I've worked with uh, Daryl Hammond, another great impressionist. He does a great Trump too, and 
Were you inspired by him? And were you, you were on his cast? Yeah. Daryl, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Daryl was great. He was uh, kind of a mentor a bit. Um, and yeah, he was a cool guy. And yeah, nothing bad to say about him. I mean, he's, uh, I think, one of the best ever. Yeah, he's super talented. Daryl Hammond, yeah. I mean, so good. You know, yeah, everyone's got their own style. Was- Everyone's yeah. got their own style. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like even an impression, you go, well, you're just, you're doing a, you're doing an impression of this person. So, but everybody goes about it differently. You know, everybody yeah. has different ways to accentuate things and all that. What would Jimmy Fallon say about Daryl Hammond? Ah, oh, amazing guy. It's the coolest guy in the world. You know what I mean? Incredible. Like vivid. You know Everything's vivid. You know what I mean? Vivid. <laughs> So the other amazing thing about your show is that you have some very big celebrities. You've had Bill Burr, you've had Harlan Williams, Alec Baldwin. Who who else have you had on? Um, and these aren't I've impressions. Had... These are the actual real celebrities and stars yeah. and actors. Yeah. Yeah. Alec Baldwin was uh, kind of the first big one. Although I think it's Bob Saget too. Bob Saget. Um, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, you know, Tommy Chong and. Uh, Sherry O'Terry and uh, oh, she's hilarious! Yeah, that's great. A lot of good ones. Yeah, so uh, Dave, Fo- find- oh, Dave, Dave Foley. Oh, Dave Foley. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So everybody, tune into the Jeff Richards show. It's hilarious, amazing impressions. It might go completely viral again, and uh, and you'll see some of the amazing interview and uh, impressionist talents of Jeff Richards. Thank so, you. Thank you. Oh, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on. This is so weird. <laughs> and, we yeah, usually so just rarely... pra- you're usually just practicing this. <laughs> we record this. Oh, wait, am anyway, I recording? This... Yeah, I think I'm recording. This this one felt special though. I think. Uh, yeah, it's for just, the, life uh... is so weird. This is life weird. <laughs> for the people who don't know, we have to do technical tests to make certain things are running, so things don't shut down, which sometimes they do online, you know, with different websites and stuff. So. All right, cool. so great. Catch uh, Jeff Richards on the road and uh, find him on Instagram and find the show. It's great. And uh, thanks for coming on. All right, thanks, Gary.